name is Lori Burns and I'm the author of this book, Citizen Scientists, Be a Part of Scientific Discovery from Your Own Backyard. And I'm going to read to you the uh, opening section of the book, which is called, What is Citizen Science Anyway? It's not a phrase you hear every day, and it doesn't exactly roll off the tongue. But citizen science is the beating heart of this book, so we'd better start by defining it. A citizen is any resident of our world. I'm a citizen, and so are you. Science is a systematic study of our world, a way of understanding it by watching it closely, puzzling out how parts of it work, testing these ideas with experiments, and then sharing what we learn with the rest of humankind. Citizen science, then, is the study of our world by the people who live in it. Not just professional people, scientists with degrees and laboratories and fancy equipment, but everyday people, too. All men, women, and children who use their senses and smarts to understand the world around them can be citizen scientists. And I happen to think you would be a great one. Why? Well, let me tell you a story. One day, while I was in the middle of writing this book, my daughter and I took a walk through a milkweed meadow. It was nearly October, and the sun was setting, which meant conditions weren't great for spotting a monarch butterfly chrysalis, but that is exactly what my daughter wanted to do. I suggested we look for ladybugs or caterpillars instead, but she wouldn't be swayed. A chrysalis is pretty hard to find, I warned her. I know adults who have searched for years and never found one. She was walking behind me at this point, and I heard her laugh. It's really not that hard, Mom, she said. I turned to disagree, to tell her about the man I'd read about who'd been watching and raising monarch butterflies for more than 20 years and had never, not once, seen a chrysalis in the wild. And there was my daughter, nose to pupa with a chrysalis, right there in our wild. She was studying the golden threads, the droplets of dew, the silken pad holding the whole thing up. I realized in that moment something I had known all along but had yet to write down in my book. Young people see the world differently than older people do. And when it comes to working in the field as a citizen scientist, these differences are important. For example, think about size. My daughter is only four feet tall, which means that chrysalis she found was practically at eye level. I'm five feet seven inches tall, and the chrysalis was so far under my nose, I didn't even notice it. As a kid, you're closer to the world under your feet than you will ever be again. This can be an advantage in the field. There's also the issue of sensitivity. At 40 years old, I don't perceive sights, sounds, smells, touches, and tastes as well as I once did. My daughter's senses, on the other hand, are still developing. Each day, she sees and hears and smells and feels and tastes a little better than the day before. She's only just coming into her prime as an observer of the world. And the same is true for you. Finally, let's talk about focus. As I walked with my daughter that day, my eyes were on the meadow around me, but my mind was in lots of places. I was thinking about finding a chrysalis, of course, but also about a whole list of other things. My daughter and how nice it was to spend time with her, what I would make for dinner that night, how I needed to remember to stop and buy a gallon of milk on the way home, how well or not I had written about this magical place the milkweed meadow, in my work that morning. I was living in several moments at once. My daughter was focused on the one and only moment at hand, and so she found something extraordinary. Living close to the earth, being observant, and staying focused are excellent traits for a scientist to have. And kids, kids like you, come by these traits naturally. I hope this book will inspire you to embrace them and to begin your work as a citizen scientist. And I hope you'll share the extraordinary things you find with the rest of us. One last thing. Please don't worry if you don't happen to live near a milkweed meadow. Many of us don't. The exciting truth is that we need to understand wildlife in all sorts of settings, from rural country fields to busy urban parks. The number and type of wildlife you will observe in each location are very different, and there are particular citizen science projects that will be better suited to each. But the bottom line is that what you observe where you live no matter where that is, is important. Whether you are in your backyard or in the park near your friend's house or watching the window box outside your high-rise apartment, there are things to see. Keep your senses open to the sights and sounds of your little patch of the world. Record what you experience. Then look at the back of this book for a list of several organizations that may be interested in knowing what you've discovered.